You ever get lost when you're creating to the point where you just zone everything else around you out? I do that in this video, so stay tuned. Okay, hey you guys, welcome to another episode of the Artsy Trio. This is mood board number 14. 14, I can't believe it. So if you want to get your own copy of the mood board, which is this one here, then you can do that by joining the Artsy Trio Facebook group. The link is in the video description. Um, if you look at the mood board, it's very, uh, red, roses, hearts, some nature, some distressed books. There was just something about it. I couldn't let go of the red color. I couldn't let go of the idea of um, painting a certain image, which we'll get to in a minute. And last night in the middle of the night, I thought about what I wanted to say, which is just totally bizarre. Anyway, <laughs> Bizarre yet not bizarre. So first we're gonna work on the background. Of course, we're gonna use this as an art experiment. Do I know exactly that it's gonna turn out? Not really, but we're gonna find out. Um, I'll make some notes on this side about what I did and let's just give it a shot. I will be transparent and say that I experimented a little bit on a scrap piece of paper before we got started. I do think it's gonna turn out the way I want, but we'll see. All right. Let's get first, um, we're gonna do the background. Let's get started. I have my Hemi gouache palette here. Um, this is an old deviled egg tray. And the first thing we're gonna do is background. So I want to do blue sky colors, uh, muted. I've got this like pretty sort of turquoisey blue. I'm gonna put some of it on here. I'm going to add some water and just really sort of mute it. Maybe do this. I have a little bit of a darker blue, but I don't know that I want to add too much of that, but we'll see how far we get. Um, I kind of want a bigger brush, so let me grab one. Should have done that before I turned the camera on. But you know, hindsight's always 20-20, right? All right, let me grab some clean water. This is a big flat brush. It's great for washes like this. Oh yeah, that's better. One of the reasons I put some of my Hemi gouache in this egg tray was so I could use like this big flat brush and I could get it into the colors fairly easily. Okay, so now let's give that a dry. Okay, the next thing I want to do, <clears throat> my friend Leslie McGrath was just here recently visiting while I'm talking, I'm getting out some glue, by the way. And um, she was working, we were working on projects uh, here in the art room and she was using this doily, um, which she obviously, you can see she used part of it and she left the rest. I was gonna throw it away and I thought, you know, I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna use it on this project. It's one of those things I just, my mind just couldn't let go of. So now that we've done that wash on the background, we're gonna put this down. Try to make sure all the edges are glued. For those unaware, most of the time I use glue stick to do uh, this sort of thing. Collage and this. If it's thicker paper, I'll use different glue, but most of the time I can get away with the glue stick. Okay, so that's, exactly what I thought it was gonna look like, which is great. While 
that's kind of drying, not that it needs to dry a lot. We're gonna set this aside somewhere. And we're gonna work on the focal image, which is gonna be a rose. Now, fun fact, I actually dislike painting roses and I never feel like they turn out real well. This one's not horrible, um, but we're gonna, uh, I'm determined to keep playing with it. This is the sample one that I did. We're gonna do it again. I will show you how I did this. It's very easy. I know you guys are like, oh my God, a painting tutorial. I can't do that. Yes, you can. Um, if I can do it, you can do it. Cause yeah, I'm not great at it. All right. You're gonna need a water soluble paint. It can be, um, it can be water soluble ink even, but you're gonna need something that's water soluble like watercolor or gouache. You probably can do this with acrylic, but you're gonna need to work faster because the, once the acrylic dries, it's, you can't move it. I'm gonna start with, um, this, this one I started with the dark red. I think this time I'm gonna start with pink and I'm going to mix my pink up here. Let's see. And I have a very small brush. It's a number five round. And I'm gonna get the end of the brush wet. Yep, yeah. okay. Oh, there, now I can see better. Okay, so I'm gonna start up towards the top of this little card. These are cut to like ATC size. And I'm gonna just do a swirl and I'm going to sort of shaky handed swirl. Sometimes pressing down hard on the paper. Sometimes lifting it up so just the tip shows. Okay. Then I'm going to take a little bit bigger round brush. Where did it go? There it is. And I'm going to take mostly just water but with a little bit of the pink paint. And I'm going to just do these sort of half moon shapes around the swirl that we just did. Now you can always go darker, but you can't generally go lighter, especially with a water soluble paint like gouache or watercolor, um, at least not without much difficulty. So start out light um, and then you can go darker. That actually was too much paint, see? And which one of these I end up using just really depends on how this one turns out, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna just take the wet brush and go over this and some of that paint pigment will stick to the brush and see there, it lifted some of that, some of that up. So as long as you work kind of quickly and you work while it's wet. Now the whole idea behind this is to work while it's wet. Um, but if I don't, this is gouache, so it'll re-wet. But anyway, so now I'm gonna grab some of the red, just a little bit. I'm going back to the small brush. And this is still wet, so you can see the red just automatically um, goes and mixes in with the pink because the water-soluble paint is going to take that path of least resistance and it's going to follow the water. It's not gonna go onto the parts of the paper that are still dry. It's gonna follow the water. And hopefully we come out with something that looks like an abstracted painting of a rose. And you can keep working with it and adding color to it until you get exactly what you want. Remember when you are doing this and you're touching this little tiny paintbrush to your paper, you're not digging any holes to the other side of the planet. Very, very, very light touch, delicate touch. That's actually not bad, I'm surprised. Okay, we're gonna go back to some pink because I feel like it needs Something like right here.
Yep. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of green to it. I've got a couple shades of green. Hopefully this is not where I mess it up, but we'll see. So that was with the, the big brush and the lighter green. Now I'm going to go in with a smaller brush and a darker green. And that's it. Those are the two roses. I do think I did a better job on this one than I did this one, but they're both nice. Um, so now we're going to push that paint aside and we are going to dry both of them because they're both still wet and I'll be right back. Okay, before we do anything else, I kind of want to distress the edges on this because there is some like brown, um, beigey, weathered, rusty colors on the mood board. Um, specifically with the, um, the old books that are on the board. Um, but before I decide what colors I'm using, we're gonna just go on a scrap of paper here. Color. This is the twig. Okay, and then I'm gonna take the frayed burlap. And again, these are just makeup, these are makeup brushes. These are cheap. I think these are from Wish, but I mean, you could just get stuff at the dollar store. They do make distress brushes. If you have those, use those. So that is actually really nice and that's how I wanted that to look. So let me reset the table and let's get this page finished. Oh my God, you guys, I thought I had the camera on and it wasn't on. Holy crap. Okay, you guys, so camera issues because I've been off for like three weeks and haven't been filming. Is it really camera issues or is it operator issues? I think it's operator issues. Anyway, after we got the distressing done, it turned out like this, which you already saw in the clip. Don't you love the way this looks? I love it. Um, I did, as I said, think about something in the middle of the night last night that I wanted to say on the page. So I took a dark gray uniball, unipin um, fine liner, and in, it, it actually is dark gray, that's the color. And I wrote this on a spare piece of note paper. And then I took the same pen and just did some um, doodling around the rose image, sort of blueprint inspired e straight lines. I don't know. I love the way this turned out. What do you guys think? Super easy. I know you guys could figure this out. So we're going to put do some notes now. Um, and since I forgot to film this part, I'll film and talk you through this part. So I always make notes in this journal. This is my sort of experiments journal. Um, and after I finish the page, I write down some notes and thoughts about the page. So first I always start out with what kind of paints and mediums I used. Um, so Hemi gouache. We'll leave um, a, set, a little bit of room for the paint swatches and then um, distress ink. And I put the ink away. I need to do swatches. What was I thinking? Oh, let's grab the colors. Pumice stone and frayed burlap. So in this case, because no, not pumice stone. Great burlap. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It was 
this twig, something twig. It was the lighter one, not the darker one. See, this is what happens, you guys. I'm just like... That's not it. Whoops. Salty ocean. Nope. Wild honey. Nope. Gathered twigs. Holy cow. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to just do this and then we will um, write the name under it. Un so, yeah. And then for the gouache paint, we're going to grab a little brush here. And they don't really have paint names, but we're going to just do a swatch of the colors. There's really only four colors. Well, no, I'll do the blues too. So six colors. Green. Okay. It helps if the brush is all the way clean. This way, if I ever want to do something inspired by this again, I know exactly what I did. Obviously, as you can see, I'm a bit forgetful and scatterbrained on a good day. And believe it or not, today is a good day. So if I don't make myself notes, forget what the heck I did. Just got to drop a paint on the picture, which is Okay, I guess, but let's see if we can get some of that off. Because, you know, this is just turning out all kinds of um, interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're going to call it, interesting. Balance out one mistake with another. There you go. Because maybe that was meant to be, right? Okay. Um, And actually, I like the little mistakes. What do you guys think? So I would love to see what you do if you are inspired by this month's mood board to create something in your journal. I'd love to see what you do. I'm sorry for the um, lack of proper filming in this video because, you know, anyway, but I hope you saw enough to give you an idea. The most important thing I wanted to bring you was how to do this, and that's what I did. Assembling the page, y'all can do that, I have confidence. Anyway, um, think about joining us over in the RT Trio Facebook group. Um, I will link the others videos down below. Uh, check them out, show them some love, like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye guys.